Welcome to No Apologies with Becker on Beck. I am Lori Hins, and I am obviously not Rick Becker, but he is on assignment once again. He is actually in South Dakota right now at what's called Freedom Fest. We talked about it a little bit last night. He was in a booth, and tonight he's back there, but this time he's got friends. Let's go see how things are going in South Dakota. Hello. Hey, Lori. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we're at Freedom Fest, and I have with me Michael Cobb, and he's the top guy at ECI. Michael, what's your title? Uh, CEO. Found, CEO. Founder. founder. Started the company 25 years ago. Okay, yeah. tell our viewers, if you would, what ECI is all about. I find this fascinating, and, and uh, I think our viewers are going to be interested. Thank you. Yeah, we're helping folks own property overseas, whether it's a vacation property, an investment property. Uh, we're seeing... We've always served a retiree market, right, for the affordable life overseas. But I'll tell you what, in the last 18 months, the number of people looking for a plan B have a place outside of Dodge because, you know, people always think, oh, you know, if the train goes off the rails. Well, guess what? We're watching the train go off the rails. And for the first time ever, people are seeing that viscerally, right, being forced to wear masks or being forced to close their businesses. And they're like, whoa, this isn't the America I remember growing up in. And you know what? If this is the beginning of a train wreck, it's only gonna get worse from here. So uh, we, we actually had our best year in 2020. And by April, we had this year, we had already eclipsed 2020 numbers. It is insane how many people wow. are looking for this safety net, the freedom insurance, right? That the is freedom so insurance. interesting. So yeah. I, I would imagine, I mean, you've been in this business for a long time. Yes. And I, I assume that in previous years, it was not so much a, a plan B or safety net. It was just either an investment or a yep. good opportunity, go wintering. Yep, yep. Look, look, we've always talked about how people come overseas. They're either running towards something, a quality of life, affordability, a beautiful vacation property, a nice investment. That's running towards something. Now we're seeing people running away. They're running from their countries. By the way, we have a ton of Aussies, Kiwis, Brits, uh, Canadians who, who I mean, in, in those countries, the lockdowns have been even more severe, which is hard to imagine. So we've seen an influx of, of countries, but again, people running away from what they have at home that they just don't like. And uh, so it's it's a real shift in the market. Actually, it's not so much a shift, it's an incremental piece of the market. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, a, a lot of the properties that you are dealing with are in Belize. Yeah. And Belize is pegged to the US dollar two to one. It is. Yeah. And the other countries that are in Central America and, and Mexico are not. So are, is that playing a role in the interest level, especially as we see more inflation in the U.S.? How is that all coming around? Yeah. So, so we actually got our start in Belize back in 1996, but we now work in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama. So we're in four countries today. We're working on a project in El Salvador and a project in Mexico right now. So uh, ultimately, we're, we're expanding the company very rapidly to serve this desire on the part of people to, to, to leave you know, the U.S., leave their home countries in many cases, uh, but they don't all want to go to Belize for the same reason. It's tied to the U.S. dollar, right? So people are thinking to themselves, well, you know what? I, I, I want to be outside the U.S. dollar. So a country like uh, Costa Rica or Mexico or uh, you know, Panama and El Salvador are on the U.S. dollar. Uh, Nicaragua, believe it or not, people are always like, Nicaragua? Nicaragua has been our top selling country in the last 18 months. Mm. Uh, they they, wow. they they, they took a very laissez-faire attitude about COVID. Hey, you want to wear a mask? Wear a mask. You don't want to wear a mask? Don't wear a mask. You want to shut your business? Shut it. Don't. It was tremendous. And uh, and the number of people who recognized that in the freedom community said, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Right. Are, are, in Nicaragua, was it mostly on the Pacific side? Mostly, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 And, that's, and, uh... and I lived there for 14 years. Wow. Raised a family there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was tremendous. So yeah. we, I've been the expat. And uh, we, we went for what we thought would be three years. My wife took a two-year-old daughter. And after three years, my wife said, do we really have to go back to the U.S.? Said, no, not really. So we stayed 11 more. I mean, you know, right, 14 years. Yeah. Now, um, <clears throat> again, a comparison, Belize is uh, English-speaking primarily. Correct. Yes, correct. Um, whereas the other countries are Spanish-speaking. That is correct. Are you, for folks that are approaching you and are looking at doing something overseas, are you advising that they speak Spanish if they're not going to Belize? Well, you, you know, it, it's always great to be able to speak the local language. But when I moved to Nicaragua uh, in 2002, I spoke no Spanish, none, zero, right? But a lot of people speak English. I mean, they, they watch it, US TV, movies, things like that. So the, the amount of English spoken in Central and South America is high. Uh, but yeah, we, we took lessons. I became somewhat fluent. 
uh, my girls would say that, you know, I, I don't speak Spanish very well. <laughs> <laughs> They're always the biggest critics, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and so what, how, does, how does one, our viewers, for instance, decide to take that first step into looking if this is something even remotely like they might want to do? You know, I, I, I caution people, look, the, the, the adage of a lot of developers come on, they talk about how wonderful it is, it's great, it's great, you know what I mean? it's all peaches and cream. You know what? No, it's not. It's not peaches and cream, right? It's a rose. And roses are beautiful, they smell great, but they have thorns, right? And so one of the things we've done over the last 25 years is we produce a ton of research content that we provide for free, like this consumer resource guide right here. And, and, and this talks about the thorns, right? We talk about 15 questions that people should ask when they buy property overseas, right? Because we don't know what to ask and, and how do we do it well? How do we, how do we really accomplish what we want, which is to own the property that we really want and have it be excellent for us. It takes due diligence, go slow. The best thing I would say is get a copy of the consumer resource guide. Uh, take that as your handbook when you're looking for property anywhere outside the US, North America, and it will be a tremendous asset for you. Hey, look, if, if you're interested in one of the countries you work in, love to, love to have a conversation with you. But you said, look, I want to own a home in Thailand. This, this consumer resource guide will still help you make better decisions about a property in Thailand you know, we don't yeah. work there, so, you know, nothing for me on that, um, except that, except that we end up with happy expats, and when a person ends up in Thailand and goes to Google's or sends pictures home, Facebook and whatever, YouTube, and, and they're like, wow, it's so great over here. The world appreciates happy people. It helps my business because more people might want to overseas i like that the world appreciates happy people I, yes yes it does <laughs> i think that's a pretty good statement i like that um, and again the the web i'm sorry Lori, did you have a question i would say no i was going to say that's very true the world does appreciate happy people and you need to know that if you want to go to belize that's great but today it was 106 in bismarck <laughs> it was you know, I, I wonder what degrees. it was in, in belize it was probably less yeah, probably less. Uh, it actually in Bismarck, was North Dakota is 106 today. Yeah. Our yeah, weather if you're, if guy. You're on Amber Key right now. The temperature is probably about 85. Blue sky, puffy white clouds. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, it was so toasty that we beat a record from 1901 today. So oh, yeah. Beat a record yeah. from 1901 today. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. People don't expect that, and uh, <clears throat> neither do we, even though we know better. Um, all right. <clears throat> The, uh, Michael, another question I wanted to ask is, are people coming in, say, as as a, a, a expanded family unit or friends, are they doing kind of their own timeshare sort of process, um, or are there just straight out timeshares that you're doing? You know, we, we only work in whole ownership, so we don't do timeshare fraction or anything like that. So, so somebody owns a property, they get physical title to it, they own it, it's theirs, right? But we also do property management, rental management, so again, for people with vacation, but about a third of our property owners live in their properties full time. They own it, they live in it, right? And, uh, and again, th th this, this, uh, this last 18 months, the number of people actually looking to live in their properties has gone up to maybe half. So yeah, so, so I mean, it, it, it's a real shift in the market, um, but right, people have title, it's theirs, they own it, uh, and, 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 and that's a kind of a, a real differentiator because you know, we build residential communities. That, that's really what we do. We build towns, we build small towns in the region, and we build different neighborhoods, depending on what people want, some people want condos, small homes, big home, estate lots, you know, farms, little farmettes, we do those as well. Hmm. And so, because people are looking, I take, especially in the last you know, couple of years, People are looking for resiliency. They want a home where they know they can put up some solar, they can be off the grid, they can do rainwater harvesting, they can have an acre, they can plant their garden and be somewhat resilient. That's probably not enough to like give up the grocery store, sure. but, but you can actually you know, go a long way down that path uh, with, with the technology that's available today, the aquaponics, things like that, yeah. that, that really change that, that reality for people to be resilient. Uh, that's a new word in the industry, and, and we responded to that. Um, you know, we listen to what the marketplace wants. We serve that to the consumer. Gotcha. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. We, we're going to have to take off here. Why don't you uh, give us your website one more time? We'll yeah. say goodbye. Yeah, ecidevelopment.com. If you just say, you send an email to info at ecidevelopment.com, ask for the consumer resource guide, this book right here, just in the subject line. Love to send it to you free of charge. Great resource. All right, Michael, thank you very Eric, much. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah.
There you go, Lori. Very good. Thanks so much. It was excellent, great information. I'm sure we can use that. And uh, that yeah. website again is ecidevelopment.com. Now, when we come back, we are going to do a little talking about Lori. the yeah. BNSF Lori, thank you. bridge debate. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much. Stay All right, cool. we'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, great. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Yeros with the region's only Yero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to pull them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. Welcome back to No Apologies with Becker on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. Uh, I am Lori Hins at the Bourbon Bureau tonight, and with us remotely, remoting in, is Rick Becker, who is at the Freedom Fest event, which is going on all weekend long, I hey, think, Lori. in South Dakota. I'm glad to have you back. <laughs> yes. Um, I tell you what, this is a very interesting thing. It's our first time, obviously, doing something like this. Mm -hmm. And apparently there's some growing pains. And apparently there's some miscommunication with the people in the exhibit hall with their exhibitors because I have a time for the next hour and a half in which to conduct interviews and for which I've scheduled interviews, but they're right. shutting the lights down. Um, <gasps> so you and I are scheduled to have a guest for the next segment, not this one, but mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm rounding him up to get him here because I actually may be kicked out after that. So I, I'm, I'm what can I say? I, 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 if I could, I would apologize, but of course I can't. Um, <laughs> There's no apologies. That's right. That's so, part of the deal. <laughs> right. So we've got a gentleman, uh, Jim Babka, I believe his name is. I'm hoping he's going to show up here any second. What he's representing, it's called Downsize DC, and they are looking to have a, a bill or maybe a constitutional amendment. I don't know. I got to ask him. But to make bills always one subject. 
And uh, wow, yeah, the gentleman I is love here, right? that yes. idea. It should oh, be great. it should be really really interesting. And uh, Jim, go ahead and have a seat. We started without you because this is such a weird thing here with the exhibit hall. <laughs> um, so guys, <clears throat> Jim and Jim, tell me your last name. If Babka. You Babka. 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 B A B A B K A. Okay, uh, Jim Babka, and um, so. You are with, is it Downsize DC? Downsize DC, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thanks, you're, you're a little out of breath. Thanks for coming in like last second. I know, I, I appreciate <laughs> it. And our viewers appreciate it because I think we're going to get kicked out. Um, so I, I find it very intriguing, Jim. The, the focus, as I understand it, is that you would like congressional bills to be on one subject. Yes. Okay, tell our viewers why. Because right now what uh, the leaders in Congress do is, is very different from what I grew up with, uh, watching Schoolhouse Rock. Today I'm still yeah. just a bill. <laughs> and what they do, I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> what they do is, is they, they, they log roll. They take ideas that would have no chance of standing up on their own, like old Bill, right? And they attach them to sure to pass bills. Yep. Yeah, big omnibus bills, the defense bill, the uh, transportation bill. <clears throat> and what ends up happening is things that could never stand on their own pass that way. So what we said is that there should, there should be a one subject at a time act. Every bill should have a clear descriptive title limited to one topic. And then everything in the bill should be about just that topic and no other. And because we don't trust Congress to actually follow its own rules, mm -hmm. we didn't propose this as a mere rule that they could waive with a majority vote. We want it to be a law. And the way that we enforce the mechanism, in fact, because we can't arrest Congress for not doing their job, uh, too bad. <laughs> so what We'd we, like what to. we did was we said that if you find yourself in the dock, you're charged with a, a crime or not paying an assessment or a tax or a fee where they didn't follow the procedure, you can present that evidence to the judge and he can kick the case out with impunity. He should kick the case out. Mm -hmm. yes. So they can pass laws all day if they wanted to, violating this provision, but it wouldn't it wouldn't have any teeth. They wouldn't be able to enforce their laws. And so uh, and we've done this with a couple other bills. We've written a Read the Bills Act that has this provision and a Write the Laws Act that has this provision, dealing with other aspects of how they pass legislation or they force regulation down our throat that hasn't had a chance to be vetted by the American people, where we are actually represented by our representatives. I, I think it's such a fantastic idea because so often, as you mentioned, like an omnibus bill, it has so many things in it. And let's just say there's 10 and there's six of them that, that the senator or congressman knows his constituents <clears throat> want, knows that they're the right thing and that's what they stand for. But then there's one or two or three or four others that are marginal or actually quite, quite bad, but they do not have the spine to say, well, I can't vote no because my opposition is gonna say I voted no for the good things. Right. So they just go along with it and that's how we get all the crap, all the pork. And this is a beautiful idea. Yes, and, and so, you know, one of the, First off, I think this is a, the idea that we're proposing here is what I would call transpartisan. It means it can appeal to all sides, okay? And secondly, even more important, I think you can divide this in, inside the Congress between the leaders, the leadership, what they famously call the cardinals, the committee chairs and so forth, and the, the majority leader and the minority whip and so forth, and the backbenchers, all the rest of the representatives. You know, we think of these people going off to Washington to represent us, but a lot of them are stuck in a pay-to-play system. There's been some representatives who've exposed this in recent years yeah, yeah. Where, the, where they're really representing the leadership of their party as opposed to the people back in their own district. And what happens though is be when they, they vote for these large packages, that means they're also voting for a bunch of things that they would not have supported in the first place. Yes. And when re-election time comes around, they get attacked by their opponent for voting for this or that or the other things that they're embarrassed that their name is attached to. And they say, well, wait a minute, that wasn't really my intention. And they have to go into this explanation and dance. We have an opportunity here with this proposal to reach out to those backbenchers and say, you know what, your party leaders, the committee chair shouldn't have all this power over you. You should be have equal power. You were elected the same way they were. You're a representative representing constituents just as they are. And so you should be able to, to judge individually every single bill that comes forward. Now, I will admit, I have a little bit of a selfish interest here. I'm downsized DC after all. If they cannot, uh, you know, railroad or shove things through, cluster them inside uh, sure to pass bills, fewer things will pass. And that means we downsize DC. Absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. Um, I, I don't know how you can argue uh, against that. Now, what kind of traction are, are, is Congress currently aware of downsize DC and this particular? Well, okay, so let's talk about the one subject at a time, Mac. We are, in, we are introduced in both the House and the Senate. Okay. And in the House, we have 10 co-sponsors at the moment. 
and we have a plan to get this passed. Uh, step one is what we call the 300. So our goal is to find 300 constituents in, in every single district in the country and have them begin visiting their congressional offices in person in waves, three, five, or six people at a time. So if you're a little bit shy and you don't want to talk, I don't imagine that's your problem. You would be the <laughs> spokesman for the group, right? Yeah. You could be the spokesman for your group, but if you're if you're more shy, you can step back. You can go not just on your own, but as a group, okay? So you feel a little more confidence going. But for the congressional offices, we want these messages to be coming in like waves crashing in, just one group after yes. another after another until they wear down and do the right thing. So that that's step one. Step two is what we call option activism. So in the world of finance or in real estate, they know that an option is a, is a promise to do something in the future if certain commitments or, 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 or criteria are met, mm -hmm. okay? We are applying this to activism. And we're doing this because one of the big, big problems that people have are apathetic, maybe a bit nervous because they think, well, this isn't gonna work. What's the point in bothering? What we're saying is, hey, come to downsizedc.org and sign up to be one of the 300. And then you don't have to do anything, nothing, yeah. until we have 300. When we have 300, we'll kick it into gear, we'll start the way going in. Then you know you're not wasting your time. You're part of an effort that is much more likely to succeed. Well, that's fantastic. So the 300, and how, are, are, do you have a timeline for when you'd like to see that accomplished? Well, we'd like to get it done during this congressional term. Mm -hmm. uh, but if not, we'll be back and we'll start all over in the next congressional term. Uh, the goal is to, get the, is to get the necessary 300. And we're working on that right now. Just, uh, just this morning, uh, we, uh, my report came in, we recruited 85 people. And I'm hoping people oh, here who will listen right now uh, will, uh, will participate as well. They can come to downsizedc.org. They can learn all about the strategy there. The action tab has the six issues that we're focused on the most right now, including the aforementioned one subject at a time act. Yes, fantastic. So downsizedc.org. Correct. Is that correct? All right, folks. Uh, you heard it here. It sounds fantastic to me. First time I've heard of it. I wish you all the success in the world. This needs to happen. Thank you very, very all much. Right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. Rory, back and all. to you. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, kidding. Sounds great. Sounds very logical and sounds like it's going to be only good for Americans. I mean, every time you can downsize DC, Thank that's you. a good thing. So thanks a lot. That was Jim Babka. I have a little quick promo to give you, too. Uh, we have uh, become one of the top five in the best of the best as our television station. So Beck TV is uh, vying for best of the best. So you can vote for us, uh, your leader in local uh, information and uh, shows, and you can vote twice a day all the way through August 9th. And what you do is you text 699 to that number that you see on your screen, 701-369-9464, if you want to vote for us. Text 699 to that number and vote for Beck TV in the best of the best. Or you can scan it on your TV with your phone right now. We'll leave it up here for a couple of seconds for you. When we come back, I'm going to talk about, um, we'll talk about the bridge debate with the BNSF Railway Bridge when we come back. Join us. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Prairie Patriot Firearms and Training is the region's most complete gun and training center. Five lane indoor range, a gun shop, and a certified training facility. Firearms training courses are offered daily for new, intermediate, and advanced shooters. If you're not comfortable in a classroom setting, Prairie Patriot offers one-on-one -on -one private lessons. From basic self-defense training to concealed weapons testing, along with a full line of guns, ammunition, holsters, and concealment clothing. Prairie Patriot, 3930 Memorial Highway, prairiepatriot.com. 
40 years ago, Arrow Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spin, plus Nathan's Hot Dogs, Calzones, and our delicious Jumbo Buffalo Wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. You are watching No Apologies with Becker on Beck tonight. Beck is, um, well, allowing our Bourbon Bureau host off the reservation. He's out of the state, yeah. and he is, he is having a great time at what's called Freedom Fest. You've had an excellent time already, and it goes all weekend, right? Yeah, it is. It is. I've been busy, 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 and um, apparently there's confusion on the timing um, for the exhibit hall. We're being kicked out. Um, I've negotiated to have about seven to eight more minutes here before they call security. Um, and I have I have a really interesting guest with me. Uh, I met Sarah Hellum, Sarah Hellum with American Logos. And uh, it's a really interesting organization with a really interesting mission. So Sarah, welcome, thank you for being on. Thank you for having me. And yeah, if you can tell our viewers what it is that, that your organization is all about. Yeah, of course. So American Logos is a nonprofit international debate organization. And we essentially, our mission is we go overseas and we promote US values and we talk about free economics and we are able to have these discussions with others about what liberty looks like on a very practical level. That's fantastic. Um, it seems to me, and what, what's the age group? Um, we are primarily high school students. High school students. Yes. So I, that was gonna be my question. The, it seems to me that it, it could be very intimidating mm -hmm. when as soon as you hear about global debate, <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, so do you, are, how do you, um, for those that are interested, uh, do you find that you have a hurdle to get across that, yes, it's, you are, you are good enough and, um, and you can be part of this organization. Do you find that's an issue? I think, you know, there is a big learning curve, right? Going up and speaking is very difficult, but I think it's very important that we all take that step and we learn to defend what we believe. And that's what American Logos is about, being able to go out and articulate what you believe because it's, you know, if we want to promote free ideals, it's not enough to just have them. We also have to be able to share them with others and tell the world about it. I, absolutely. I, I am just so thrilled to hear about this organization. Uh, Lori and I have talked with a lot of younger people lately, and I'm kind of believing that Gen Z is going to save us. Yeah, I would uh, hope so, yes. <laughs> I mean, we need saving. Yeah. We need saving. An organization like this where you need to be well versed and have a solid foundation up that you can stand up and defend mm -hmm. these values in the face of a competition type scenario. Yes. Unbelievable. So how has it been over, uh, first off, I guess, how long has the organization been in effect and what has its trajectory been? We've been in effect for about 10 years. We started off pretty small. Um, it was, you know, there was only a few teams and now we, we will send um, you know, four or five teams to other countries to go and debate to represent the U.S. Mm. Um, and, you know, it, it's had a really good trajectory. We've gotten a lot bigger as years have gone. Yeah, that's um, fantastic. Uh, so our viewership is primarily in North Dakota. Okay. Uh, not exactly a, uh, you know, high density state. Mm -hmm. So is there an opportunity for even kids in North Dakota to be involved in this type of organization? There is, absolutely. We actually pull students from every part of the U.S. We have students from California, we have students um, I'm from Colorado. We have students from Utah. So it's not actually based, it doesn't really matter where you live. 
Um, I did training in Texas and then we will go to other countries. I've been to Romania. I have friends who have been to Slovenia. Wow. So, wow. yeah. In Slovenia. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I was cool. in Slovenia in 1992 uh, when the tanks were still uh -huh. there after they broke away from the rest of the Yugoslavian war. Um, at any rate, side note. So the uh, who's won? The, who has won it over the last few years? Which country? Um, it, it really goes back and forth depending on the tournament. I know we've won a couple of tournaments. Um, China's a pretty big player. Mm. We, yeah, they're pretty competitive, but I bet. we, we hold our own. We've won a few tournaments. So, Good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, folks, I hope that, uh, if you are watching and you are of that age or, you know, someone who is that you hook them up with this group and, uh, the website, if it's not up, it's going to be, um, you got to go there because this is, I think this is what's going to save us. It's going to be folks like Sarah and her organization that are going to undo what the boomers to the zers to the, I mean, not zers, xers to millennials to the wires are screwing up. It's going to be the zers. So um, I hope you are, are going to take a look, close look at that. Um, moving forward, what is next up for, for American Logos? You know, American Logos, we are working on growing. We're looking for funding so that we're able to go to more tournaments and spread US ideals more. So definitely looking for funding. Um, we're taking on more team members. We are actually doing applications. Um, for the next set of members. So if anyone's interested, please go online and apply. We'd love to talk to you. It's it's a really great opportunity. It's it's hard, but it's it's worth it to be able to go out and share your ideals. And it's something that has helped me a lot in college. Hmm. That's fantastic. So the, the organization is run primarily on donations? It is, yes. And if they go to the website, do you see a, a, an opportunity for donations? Yes, you do. Okay, perfect. Um, well, that, that's that's wonderful. Again, I wish you all the best. I, I appreciate you. you staying on in uh, fear for your life from security <laughs> arresting you with this whole situation. Yes, <laughs> so, um, all right, great. Sarah, thank you for coming. Folks, uh, check it out, AmericanLogos.Weebly.com. Um, boy, if I had kids in high school, man, I'd be sending them there. There's no doubt about it. All right, Lori, back to you. All right, Rick, are you going to be able to talk to some more people uh, while you are there over the weekend so that we can see some maybe interviews maybe next week or? Oh, Lori, I've got a lot of interviews going. Yes, um, uh, yeah, really solid interviews all over the board. So many topics. Um, Annie and I got our picture taken with Larry Elder. We are in robes yes. for Robe Rage. Um, he wasn't available for interviewing, but um, yeah, I've got good <laughs> ones. Probably the covers for at least the next two weeks. Really good ones. Awesome. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. I saw a picture that you sent today uh, of you and April Moss, and we will talk about April Moss again. If you remember, uh, viewers, she was one of the uh, reporters who decided to go rogue right after she saw Ivory Hecker do that. So I was very excited that you got to meet her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of, a lot of cool folks here. All right. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Take care and drive Sounds safely good. when you come back. All right. Thanks. All right. All right. When we come back, we are going to go on location and give you a little peek into what happened when we were at Peacock Alley. And then we'll talk about the railroad bridge last. So stay with us. buying windows, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Hi, I'm Jesse with the Window Source. We only sell you the best windows and doors for the best price. Call the Window Source. Just because you pay less, doesn't mean you get less. Calling all first responders. Join us Friday, July 30th for First Responders Night at the Bismarck Event Center. The Bucks take on the Green Bay Blizzard with a 6.05 p.m. kickoff. For more information on tickets, please visit BismarckBucks.com. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York style pizza. We also feature Yiro's with the region's only Yiro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York to go. We deliver for you. 
It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. We're the ladies of another view, bringing you a fresh view on local issues. And different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Could you do us a favor? Beck TV is a finalist for Best Local TV Station in the Bismarck Tribune's Best of the Best. Vote now through August 9th by text or online. Vote for your leader in local, Beck TV. Welcome back to No Apologies with Becker on Beck. I'm Lori Hinn sitting at the Bourbon Bureau for Rick, who is out gallivanting around in Rapid City at the Freedom Fest event this weekend. So he's kind of on assignment, but having a great time there. Uh, we did last week, we pre-taped these, and last week he and I uh, went to Peacock Alley, and we got to have some conversations with people. You've maybe, if you've been watching all week, you've probably seen some of those conversations with people. This time around, these people we knew, but they happened to be at Peacock Alley. Apparently they were there giving us support. Uh, some ladies of a ladies of another view and uh, with us were uh, Jan Wangler and Andrea Toman and they just happened to be at the at the location that we were and so I was pretty excited to be able to have a little conversation with them so let's roll it and let's see what they say. <laughs> that there's an inherent weakness at the voting booth though where we tend as voters to think that because we know someone personally that, that we're aligned with them um, or that because they are from our district that they are somehow immune from whatever we're from that is from corruption yeah. or from yeah. um, having special interests influencing them or anything like that and so there is a weakness at the polling booth where we don't really analyze who it is that we're voting for. And it's worse in North Dakota because everyone knows everyone. And, <laughs> so and it's we even have harder because a, a tendency to rely so heavily on these institutions that set up these various candidates and say uh, the Republican Party has endorsed this candidate, therefore they must be good. Or the Democrat Party has endorsed this candidate, therefore they must be good or they must be aligned with my beliefs. Right. And that's not the case. If you're not going to challenge your representatives on what they believe, and that's not to say they have to get it right all of the time, but let's have a conversation. Let's let's talk to them. Frankly, there's no one more accessible in politics than a North Dakota legislator. There's 10,000 people, citizens, to one district. You're not going to get that kind of access anywhere else. Yeah, maybe yeah. Wyoming, okay? Maybe Wyoming. Maybe yeah. Wyoming. Maybe West Virginia, maybe. Then. But yeah, yeah. but honestly, like if if I wanted to call up my representatives, I've been involved in for le for less than ten years. But even somebody new like you, you could call up your representative. In fact, I know you could. She's sitting, sitting right across <laughs> from you. It's not that hard to get a hold of them. They're put your information's out there publicly. Your right. cell phone, your 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 email address, yes. your mailing address. Like mail them if you want to. Send them a postcard. But talk to them. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> But honestly, we could get a hold of you and we can ask you and say, just because this is what I believe, do you believe that? Or if I see that you voted a way that I'm not sure I agree with on a certain bill or something like that, talk to me. Like, why? Why did you choose to vote that way? And maybe you'll convince me, maybe you won't. Maybe I'll like your answer, maybe I won't. 
But that should inform my vote rather than what you have as a letter next to your name. It should, should, but it's a weakness, as you said. It is, it is. It's a, but a, is it an Achilles an, heel. Is it an unrealistic expectation to expect your representatives or your senator or whatever, you know, all the way up to the national level, to kind of perform as per the platform? You know, I I, that's problem, been my challenge that, with yeah. everything all the way up the chain is are you voting according to the platform that you said you were representing? You know, if you're representing the Democratic platform, you should be voting like a Democrat. If you said you were putting an R behind your name, should you not be voting like a Republican or like the Republican platform dictates? And I'm not seeing that. I still think that's our responsibility as voters, though, because I don't want to force any person to vote something that's against their conscience. And that includes the representative or congressman who that's not what they believe. So it really should be on me as a voter to elect a person who aligns with my belief so that they then can go out and vote their conscience every time. And even if they get it wrong, at least they'll be able to say, I voted that way because that's what I believe. And I can come back to them and say, Okay, where where do we differ? How do we how do we align? How do we ag how do we agree or sort this out? Maybe you convince me, maybe I convince you, maybe neither of us convince either one of us, and we let it be. But that's still better than me saying you should vote the way that I expected you to vote because of some label or because of some platform. I don't. I love the party platform. I really do. <laughs> but I don't think that that should impose anything on anyone. I think that it should help us in selecting the right candidates. Well, if you you have to have struggle with that, you, yeah. ha you have to have a something has to delineate what it means to be a member of that party, right? Correct. Yeah. And what else can you do besides have a platform? Because a you can say that, generally speaking, I agree with all or nearly all of everything that's in this platform. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a member of this party. Yes. And so I think platforms are incredibly important. Um, I remember giving a talk in Fargo one time about how principle is more important than party. And someone said, so do I, I'm a progressive, do I not belong in the Republican Party? And I gave kind of a, I should have just said, absolutely not, you don't belong in the Republican Party. I mean, that would have been a more honest answer, but I gave a, I tried to be North Dakota nice. And I just said, you know, if you, if you evaluate what you believe and you're a progressive, the Democrat Party has a platform that probably aligns with, with you better. And so there is a home fit. for you. It's not that I want to kick you out. It's that, it's that if you go according to what you believe, there's a couple of options. One clearly fits you better than the other. That's all. But as a voter, I have an expectation that if you have the R behind your name, then you most likely agree with most, if not all, of the Republican platform. And if you have a D behind your name, the reverse. Yeah. So then I expect that my beliefs would align more over here if I'm thinking Republican. But if you go into, say, the governor's office or whatever office, and you have an R behind your name, but everything you do seems more leftist or progressive, um, then I feel like my vote was wasted. Yeah. And again, I think that should be the responsibility of the people who are nominating and electing the Republican candidates or the Democrat candidates and selecting them and saying, vetting them, find it out. Say, hey, this person, they've had an R behind their name forever, but they've never voted like a Republican. Let's not endorse them again. Right, but that's starting to take place finally. Yes. And that's where we're getting pushback yeah. because vetting from people is saying on. that the platform shouldn't be considered, which means then, I mean, what I, well, no. you, you, I hear people like uh, Scott Hennon saying that the platform was created by outsiders and Bastiats and libertarians, which it wasn't. And I hear legislators saying that they don't go by the platform because when they're elected, they represent all the people. So then what does it mean? Again, I'm not saying that, that you're a bad or lesser person if you don't believe in the platform. But you're here because you believe in something and you're supposed to convey that something to the voters. So if you're saying you're a Republican, and this is what I would love to call this, uh, individually and without having the rest know at the, uh, what to, to ask each, each legislator, what does it mean to be a Republican? What does it mean to be a conservative? And I think, I'm guessing we would be horrified 
by the answers or lack thereof. We had such a good discussion with those ladies of Another View. Again, thanks to Andrea Toman and Jan Wangler for being there at Peacock Alley. And thanks to everybody who showed up and saw us at Peacock Alley as well. Also, keep in mind that we will be going on location in the future and doing more of these. So keep your ears open for your opportunity to go and pose questions to Lori and Rick. We would be happy to host you and happy to have you come up for questions. A uh, little pro tip when you are at these uh, events, make sure that you don't imbibe too much first because we had plenty of people that this last time who said, I've had too much to drink. I don't want to talk on TV. So you can have your beverages afterwards. <laughs> That's my suggestion to you. Now, a couple of things. Um, one, we're going to let you know when we have one of those coming up again, when we have an on location. But one thing that you can do right now is you can vote for Beck TV because we are up for best of the best, best local TV station in Bismarck Tribune's best of the best. And what you can do is you can text that number up on the top on your screen, 699 to 369 9464, and you can vote twice daily through August 9th. Tell them that you think Beck is the best. We'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Spas, etc. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, chuckle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. I think I forgot to say Oasis of Sanity, your after hours Oasis of Sanity, but you've made it to our segment five here tonight. Uh, no apologies with Becker. Thanks so much for hanging in with us. It's a little different. Lori Hinn's at the desk at the Bourbon Bureau with Rick out on assignment in South Dakota, but I'm going to wrap things up tonight with a topic that is very um, 
prescient. It's very timely right now, and that is talking about the BNSF rail bridge debate. Now, a lot of people have probably heard about this already, but you may not realize that there is a deadline looming with regard to some public comment. First, what I thought I would do is I would give you a little background, and my goal in this uh, segment is to tell you a little bit about the debate, give you both sides of the story, and then you can decide on your own what you want to do. But uh, the history comes from BismarckCafe.com, and it says, the BNSF Railway Bridge, originally Northern Pacific, is the train bridge spanning the Missouri River between Bismarck and Mandan. It was the first bridge to cross the upper Missouri River. Full disclosure, I have a picture of this amazing bridge in my house because I love it so much. Now, while the rail line reached Bismarck in 1873, the Panic of 1873 forced construction to halt for six years. Now, toward the end of 1878, work resumed to extend the railroad west of the Missouri River as well as a bridge. Now, the general construction contract was let in January 1881. It was designed after the Plattsmouth Bridge, connecting Iowa and Nebraska, and engineered by the same architect. The man's name was George Morrison. Now, it finally opened in October of 1882. That is how old this bridge is that you are seeing on your screen right now, nearly 10 years after the railroad first reached Bismarck, 1882. Now, when the ceremonial Golden Spike took place the month prior in western Montana, the bridge effectively um, completed the line. In April of 1905, Northern Pacific led, uh, let a contract to replace the original superstructure, comprising mostly iron with steel that could handle heavier loads. Now, when first built, train loads of 400 tons were the norm, but that weight load had roughly quadrupled, and the original superstructure was deemed inadequate. So after some modifications, the original structure was repurposed for a bridge spanning the Columbia River at Pasco, Washington. So they repurposed it and took that bridge away. The original granite piers, which you can see there, which still support the bridge to this day, were shored up. In particular, the easternmost pier had been an ongoing problem. It had been shifting toward the river. So most recently, in 2017, BNSF Railway announced intentions to replace the historic bridge. In an effort to save the icon, a local resident took up a petition with hopes to turn it into a walking bridge. The National Trust for Historic Preservation placed the bridge on its annual list of the top 11 most endangered historic places in 2019. Now, the, I looked up America's 11 most endangered historic places from 2019. It is on savingplaces.org. And some of the uh, places that were on this list, as well as this Bismarck Bridge, this BNSF Bridge, were the 10th Street Historic District in Dallas, Texas, or Nashville's Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee, and the National Mall Tidal Basin from Washington, D.C. So what has happened now is that there is, let's show a graphic next here. There is an environmental impact statement and um, the dates on this one, it says the comment period for the notice of availability of a draft environmental impact statement, they call this an EIS, published June 7th, 2021, has been extended to July 26th. That is this coming Monday, July 26th, 2021. Substantive and relevant comments must be submitted to the online docket via this website that you see on, or you can go to regulations.gov or on or before July 26th. Now the virtual public meeting will still be held as planned on June 30th, 2021 from six until 9 p.m. Central Time. Now, if you look at the next slide here, this one will show you also something that you can find that is on the Friends of the Rail Bridge website. And it says, at the time of its construction, the rail bridge over the Missouri was a technological marvel. Today, the bridge remains as one of the most important architectural landmarks of the Northern Plains. And there is a film on there. So if you want to get a little information, go to friendsoftherailbridge.org. You can get your information, watch the video that they have on there, and it gives you some information. Now, the BNSF folks have uh, given, they put out a statement kind of about what is going on and what they want to do, and it has some really valuable information for you. To maintain safe, efficient rail service in North Dakota, they say, BNSF Railway needs to build a new bridge. To, so the bridge over the Missouri River at Bismarck and Mandan 
North Dakota is over 100 years old. BNSF owns, maintains, and funds its own infrastructure. The U.S. Coast Guard is the lead federal agency to issue a permit for construction of a new rail bridge. BNSF has been in this permitting process for three and a half years. So they're waiting to get this done. 14 trains a day carrying loads of agriculture, coal, energy, and industrial products travel the bridge. Did you know that there are 14 that go across that bridge a day? BNSF builds for the present and the future, they say. Railroad infrastructure is imperative for a healthy, growing economy. BNSF plans to build a new bridge at a cost of $60 million over two to three years. So any alternative other than BNSF's plan will, they say, add years of delay and tens of millions to the project costs. BNSF wants to build the new bridge and then remove the current structure that is nearing the end of its useful life. Some want to leave the old bridge in place, but that would require BNSF to build the new structure off its property, pay millions more to mitigate the rise in the river from having two bridges in the water, and impact to additional public and private property, properties and will delay construction. So this is the problem. Do you want to keep this historic bridge or do you want to see BNSF tear it down? Um, their you know, goal is to build something new and then also to tear this one down. So uh, private companies need to be able to invest their own infrastructure to serve their customers without an endless permit process and millions of dollars in added expense, they say from BNSF. North Dakota's economy relies on rail transportation, which we know it does, and this route is integral to connecting commodities to export markets throughout the Pacific Northwest. So further delay could impact rail service on this route. So this is the deal. What can you do? Well, you can tell the Coast Guard, which is in charge of this, the Coast Guard, you can tell them the need for reliable rail service for all shippers, and you can actually get in on the public comment for this as well. I would recommend going to friendsoftherailbridge.org, getting more information. All right, so that is the story. You make your own decision on that one. On Monday, join us again because we will have a guest from New York, and he is going to give us some great information. His name is John Burnett. Join us then. We'll see you. Have a good weekend. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit my